So first of all, exercise is defined as any movement that makes your muscles work and requires your body to burn calories. There are many types of physical activity, including swimming, running, jogging, walking, dancing, to name a few. Being active has been shown to have many healthy benefits, both physically and mentally. It may even help you live longer. So with that being said, my name is Dustin, and my topic is on exercising. The first section, the first section is on why we don't exercise. Why don't we exercise? Well, there are many reasons why we don't, but these are the top logical reasons many people can relate to. I don't have time to exercise. There is no gym close to my house. I don't know how to exercise. I have no energy to exercise. I have no one to work out with. Many people are scared to work out. What I mean by this is how we're desired to avoid any experience, of, any experience of discomfort. Theories of human behavior have long shown that immediate experience often overweighs future rewards. This means that this is hard to do something uncomfortable even if it earns something good later on. We live in a society where we keep the indoor temperature adjusted to perfection, wrapped in soft clothes, and watching movies or TV shows on Netflix. Are all of these first world problems making us lazy to handle, to handle physical discomfort? Maybe exercise isn't too uncomfortable. Maybe our everyday lives are a little too comfortable. The second section is on, is on how exercise is for everybody. Even if you're new to exercise or have physical limitations, you, you always have options. Maybe you have mo mobility issues because of a medical condition and aren't sure how to get started on a fitness program without hurting yourself. Or maybe you've never taken an interest in exercise or fitness before and don't know where to start. The good news is that you can achieve your fitness goal with a plan level to your specific health needs. Any barrier to physical activity can be solved with creative thinking. So. You don't have to let excuses stop you from fitting on ex from fitting on an exercise program into your daily life. So what I'm saying is, no excuses. There you go. <laughs> Little baby. Just, just on. So what is your excuse? Believe me, I can give you no answer. Okay. So the third section are the benefits of exercising. It can help with weight loss. It is good for your muscles and bones. It can increase your energy levels. It can reduce your risk of chronic disease. It can help with skin health. It can help your brain health and memory. It can help with relaxation and sleep quality. It can reduce pain. It can make you happier and feel better. And lastly, it can promote better sex life. Now, these are the real reasons to exercise. Why wouldn't you want to have all these? Here are some people you may know that have changed their lives. Here we have Josh Beck. He's known for playing Josh Nichols in the Nickelodeon live action show, Drake and Josh. He has always appreciated that he can influence other kids' life by his lifestyle. Therefore, Josh decided to set a good example to all the kids in America and the whole world. He employed a physical trainer and transformed his eating routine from normal walks, running, cardio workouts, and other exercises. Josh Beck lost 110 pounds of weight without surgery. Nowadays people like do surgery, you know, so. He has changed everyone's mindset of working hard and the mentality of not giving up. Here you have Zach Afron, all the ladies. <laughs> Since last time, so. Look at, look at him. I want to be like him. So, here's also another celebrity you may know is Khloe Kardashian. Khloe Kardashian is a model and businesswoman. Since 2007, she has start, she stared with her family in a reality TV series, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. She has recent, recently started a new TV series called Re Revenge Body. Khloe eats seven meals a day and works out five times a week. She states she likes to mix things up and with a combination of spinning, hot yoga, and circuit training. So in conclusion, 2018 can be your, your year. The right time to change is right now. You could have started months ago and you could have made a significant progress by now. 
Everybody's doing it. It's a new year thing, new rules, new goals, new you. It's never too late. And remember, after you identify your goals and discover the best tools to reach them, get your mind right, explode, and keep grinding. Thank you. All right, Devin, what did you think? I like the use of the analogies to how we compare staying inside and how we have the temperatures kept on 70. And like, you know, we like things easy, but if you push ourselves and work out a little bit, you can stay in shape. And also I liked uh, how he showed the pictures of the celebrities and the transformations. If they can do it, we can do it. But it's another reason to be motivated and exercise. And yeah. Light. All right. <coughs> All right, well, I think there's some things about the subject that uh, work pretty well. That whole section where you talked about why people maybe resist doing exercise or have problems getting started on it, that to me seems like the one section it, that needs the most development, that's the area that I think probably is going to be most important and most interesting to the audience. And as a consequence, uh, it needs more data in it. Uh, it's, it. It's basically a laundry list that you give us without necessarily explaining the laundry list or what proof there is to support those kinds of things. Uh, if people have responded to a survey as to the reasons why they don't exercise, or if uh, there are particular examples that you could look at, uh, the kind of inferences that you make about how you know, we've made our lives maybe a little bit too comfortable. I like the kind of uh, analogies that you have there. The notion, though, that that's the reason that people don't exercise seems very speculative. And if you had any data or information that supported that conclusion, or if that's the inference that's being made by an authority, then you ought to be citing that authority in the presentation. And I didn't hear much source citation. In fact, I'm not sure I could remember anything. Uh, you start with an attention device that is basically a definition of exercise. And my guess would be if you were talking to this audience and you asked them uh, if they knew what exercise is, almost everybody would say yes, and that your, your definition isn't all that dramatically different from anything that anybody would have answered. So it's not, it, it doesn't do a whole lot to reach out and grab us and say, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about something that is going to be interesting or distinctive or different. It says, I've got something that, to check off the list, and uh, here's an attention device, and here's a subject, and you need, to, you need to put a little bit more effort into it. The, um, there's not really a very clear purpose statement. In fact, uh, your statement says, that, so my topic is exercise. I'm going, that's your purpose statement? We worked on writing purpose statements. You've got to have something different than that. I know that I didn't approve that as your purpose statement. So you've got to have the thing that you came up with. There's a little bit of a preview because you do mention at early on, you know, you're going to talk about what the reasons are that people resist exercising, what the benefits of exercising would be. And so I, I do get a sense that you have a point or an objective that you're heading for, but uh, I think that your, your layout needs to be a little bit stronger. Um, the thing with the celebrities at the end, I think, is an interesting point, although it, it's almost verging on the notion of uh, turning it into a persuasive speech that we should all go out and start exercising more. I, I do think that when you describe what the uh, stars themselves did in order to get those changes, I think that that's probably the thing that's more informative. You, you mentioned that the one guy from the TV show, uh, I don't know the TV show, I'm sorry, it's not one of those ones I watch. Uh, yeah, um, 
you know, he, he worked with a, a trainer at school uh, to get into shape, and he lost a huge amount of weight. He didn't have surgery. And I'm going, okay, so what kinds of things did he do? Did he, was he, you know, is it uh, just exercise, or did he change his diet also? Um, and what kind of exercise gets you that 100-pound uh, loss, you know, and what period of time? So if you're going to use those examples, do a little bit more to make them more interesting. I thought that the Khloe Kardashian one was a little bit more developed because you kind of told us a little bit more about uh, what her regimen and routine is, although, you know, I, I'm not sure, that, you know, she's another one of those people that I, I don't watch the shows. I in fact, I've heard her name a thousand times. I think that's the first time I've seen her. You know, so, I, you know, I've managed to stay out of the pop culture that much, so, you know, she's, she's you know, that. And I'm, and I'm wondering, well, the, which one's the before picture? Which one's the after picture? What is it that she changed? Did she, you know, tone up her arms and legs? Or did she drop some weight? Or did she firm up her buns of steel? I don't know. You know, what, you know, what is it that she did? And you mentioned some of the things, exercises that she's done and some, some of the training that she does to do those kinds of things. That's the kind of stuff that you could say, you can see, you, you can see a transformation here. Or, you know, she attributes... Uh, you know, the uh, yoga that she does to the, you know, firmness of her body tone or something like that. I, and I don't know, whatever the information is. Uh, but make it a little bit more connected to the thing that you're talking about, which are the exercises. It's, it's just very generic. All right. Now, the visuals that you had before the celebrities are problematic. I'll bet you know why. Because they're just lists. They're long lists. And you go through one of them, like, really fast. Here's a, here's a dozen things that are good for you for exercising. And that would be one of those things where maybe picking two or three of those points and giving us some real information about each of those benefits would be helpful. Just as a typical one, you mentioned, and it's good for your sex life. And I'm, I'll bet there are a lot of people going, really? How's that? What's, what's going to happen? Am I going to be, you know, ready quicker? Or am I going to be able to go longer? Or am I going to uh, have more sex, sex, you know, that kind of stuff? I mean, you just say it, and then you move on. I'm going, well, there's got to be something there, <laughs> you know? And, and, and there are other points, too, but that's one of those things. that That's an interest point. That's something that some details on, you know, no pictures, but some details on would be uh, good and interesting, and, and it would develop your speech a little bit more, you know, and turn it into something that's not just, you know, here's the brochure on why you should exercise, you know, and, and, and turn it into something a little bit more meaningful. Okay, thank you.